morning. Welcome to the weekly worship experience from the St. Paul Church in Oxon Hill. We're so excited to have you with us today. It's going to be a wonderful day of praise, a wonderful day of worship, and a wonderful day of word. Listen, do you realize this is the last Sunday of the year? We've made it through 52 full Sundays. And you know, like I know, the Lord has been gracious, the Lord has been kind, and the Lord has been blessing us the whole time. So let's close this one out with a bang. Let's close this one out by praising and by worshiping worshiping and by joining our hearts and minds together because we made it through 2021. I don't know about you, but I know this. We made it through a lot. We made it through many dangers, toils, and snares, but God has kept us. God has blessed us, and hallelujah, we made it to the other side. Let's pray real quick. Father in heaven, we say thank you today. Lord, we thank you because we made it. Lord, we thank you because we pushed through and you kept us with your loving kindness. Lord, through 12 months, you've been there. You've held us. You've been with us through everything that we've seen, through everything that we've gone through. Lord, when we were praising, you were there. When we were celebrating, you were there. But Lord, when we were mourning and when we were grieving, you were there too. Lord, every year lets us realize that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. Every year lets us realize that you are our provider, our protector, and our keeper. So, Lord, on this last Sunday of the year, we praise your name. On this last Sunday of the year, we worship and celebrate. But on this last Sunday of the year, Lord, we cry thank you. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for providing for us. And Lord, we thank you that we know the best is yet to come. We thank you because we know you still have a plan for our future. And we thank you because we know you'll never leave us or forsake us. So Lord, as we prepare to worship, join us heart to heart and join us mind to mind. But Lord, we want you here with us so that we can praise you, worship you, and everything that we do should be acceptable in your sight. So Lord, bless our hearts, bless our minds, bless our ears. But Lord, let us bless the Lord at all times because you brought us through a mighty long year. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, St. Paul, this is the last one for the year. Let's go. So glad you made it.
make it And God's gonna see you through So hold your head up Put a smile on your face Cause this is a test And it won't last always So get ready your blessing, for your blessing. Get, ready. get ready for your miracle, for your miracle. Get, ready. get ready for your blessing, for your blessing. Get, ready. get ready for your miracle, for your miracle. I know you've been hurting deep down inside, so let me encourage you. It's gonna be alright Troubles and trial They come to make you strong but Just keep on believing And you'll keep holding on So get ready Get ready For your blessing For your blessing Get ready Get ready For your miracle For your miracle Get ready Get ready For your blessing For your blessing Get ready, get ready for your miracle, for your miracle. Get ready, get ready for your blessing, for your blessing. Get ready, get ready for your miracle, for your miracle. Get ready, get ready for your blessing, for your blessing. Get ready, get ready for your miracle, for your miracle. God's got a blessing. If you believe what you say, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Fill it down in your soul. I want you to say, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. I said, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. You say, God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. 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 With your name on it, with your name on it, praise the Lord. Listen, we've got a few announcements as we close out the year. We're not done yet. I want you to join us on New Year's Eve at 7 p.m. We're going to be having our watch night service. It's going to be a wonderful time of singing, praise, and word. So mark your calendars for watch night as we join together and bring in the new year. We'll be on all of our St. Paul channels at 7 p.m. And we want to see you for watch night 2021 as we ring in 2022. Also, you know, we stay in devotionals. So our devotional for this week is simply called Wisdom Makes a Way. Listen, as we're closing out 2021 and moving into 2022, I want us to move into 2022 with the wisdom of God. In 2022, I believe we're going to have to make wise choices and wise decisions so that we can get God-blessed outcomes. So I want you to join us this week for our last devotional, 2021, which is simply called Wisdom Makes a Way. To join our devotional, just go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org, and under the ministry tab, click current devotional, and you can sign right up. It'll also be in our e-blast. Remember, our e-blast, the official organ of communication for the St. Paul Church, comes out three times a week. On Monday, you get the week ahead. On Wednesday, you get the deeper dive. And on Friday, you get the weekend ahead. If you're not getting the if you're not getting the e-blast, but you want to, make sure you go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org, and under the Contact Us tab, just write, I want the e-blast, and we'll sign you right up. We want to make sure you're informed about everything that's going on. Speaking of the e-blast, listen, we're going to be sending out a special e-blast this week to talk about in-person worship. As all of you know, some things have changed in the world, and we are making some new decisions about how we're going to move forward with in-person worship. And I want to give that to you all in a full form. So watch your e-blast this week. There'll be a special e-blast that talks about how we're going to move forward with in-person worship. 
Listen, you know we pray at the St. Paul Church, so make sure you're joining us on the St. Paul Prayer Call. The St. Paul Prayer Call is Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m., and it is a wonderful time in the Lord. To be a part of the St. Paul Prayer Call, all you got to do is call us on the prayer line, which is 605-313-5874, and use access code 390060. There's no better way to start your day than in prayer and praise with the people of the St. Paul Church. Listen, our food distributions continue to go on, but this week we're not going to be doing a distribution on Thursday. We'll only be doing our Friday distribution. On Friday, we'll be giving out fresh fruits, vegetables, and produce through our partnership with Trader Joe's. Now, usually it will be at 3 p.m., but this week it's going to be at 12 noon. So if you need fresh fruits and vegetables or know somebody that does, join us at 12 noon. It's first come, first serve for a St. Paul food distribution. I want to thank all of you for how generous you were through our Angel Tree donations. We were able to bless children all across the country because of your generosity, your willingness to give, and your willingness to stand in the gap. So I thank you because we made Christmas merry and bright for children all over the United States through the Angel Tree this year. And I want to thank you all for your faithful support of the St. Paul Church. You've supported us every week during this year. Your faithful financial support has allowed us to be a strong ministry, to do wonderful things in the community, and really all across the nation and world. And I believe that next year, God has even more for us to do. And I thank you because I know that you're generous and I know that you've been faithful. Your faithful financial support has allowed us to bless God, bless the world, be obedient, and be faithful. And this is what I know. Our faithful financial support and following God's word has blessed us as well. It's blessed us spiritually. It's blessed us financially, but it's allowed us to be obedient and God blesses us all the time when we follow his word. So now, let us get ourselves together for our last Sunday offering in 2021. Let's prepare ourselves to give our tithes and offerings. There are multiple ways that you can give to the St. Paul Church. You can give by clicking on the link on the screen in front of you. You can also give by going to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org and pressing the Give tab. If you want to give by using your cell phone, you can give through the Givelify app. Just search for St. Paul Church in Oxen Hill and you'll find a picture of me and a picture of the church so you know you're giving to the right place and you can give safely and securely there. Last but not least, you can always mail your tithes and offerings to the St. Paul Church. You can mail them to 6634 St. Barnabas Road, Oxen Hill, Maryland, 20745, Attention Finance Ministry. As you give, remember what the word tells us. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, let's give abundantly unto the Lord.
St. Paul family, as we close out this year, we've got a special guest to deliver the Word of God. This weekend's preacher is our very own district superintendent, the Reverend Dr. John Z. W. Cogman. She's a daughter of St. Paul. Her ministry started right here, and she's gone on to do such wonderful things. She's pastored multiple churches and pastored them well, and now she's the overseer for the Washington East District of the Baltimore Washington Conference of the United Methodist Church, and she's here to give us a word today. So let's drop some praise hands, let's drop some clap hands in the comments as we welcome our very own district superintendent and daughter of the St. Paul Church, the Reverend Dr. John Z. W. Cogman, as she gives us this week's word from the Lord. 
giving all honor to God, who is my father and my friend, my mother and my maker, my light and my Lord, my rock and my redeemer, my mentor and my master, my guardian and my guide. I greet you in the name of my source and my savior, Jesus the Christ. I am delighted, excited, and yes, ignited by the power of the Holy Spirit to encourage you here today to continue to make more disciples and make more disciples so that we can truly transform the world. I want to first thank Reverend Dr. Darrell Williams for allowing me this opportunity to stand in this sacred space and proclaim what thus says the Lord. Let us pray. Speak now, Holy Spirit that hearts, minds, and lives may be changed, not by anything that I say, but what you say through me, in Jesus' name, amen. So, we just finished Christmas, and I'm quite sure we had delicious foods. Well, I'm here to tell you a secret. I was the recipient of a member of St. Paul who gave me a delicious sweet potato pie. Yes, it was a homemade sweet potato pie. And the great thing about it was it wasn't too sweet. So therefore, my husband, who happens to be diabetic, could eat it. And yes, he ate it. He ate like all of the pie. Well, what in the world does the pie have to do with what I'm talking about today? It has to do with the seasonings that were put in the pie. I'm quite sure when I tried to make the same pie, it would not come out the same way. See, in sweet potato pies, you probably need things like cinnamon and nutmeg and maybe allspice. I'm not exactly sure what went into her pie, but it was delicious. Also, during this season, we may have had some chicken or some turkey or some steaks, and they were seasoned just right. Well, you know what else? I thought about seasoning and seasons and realized that yesterday was December 21st. Not only was it my birthday, but it was a new season. So season has different meanings depending on the context of what it is that you are speaking of. So today, for the brief time that I have, I want to talk to you about a new season. A new season. One of my favorite um, artists is Israel, and at that time was Israel and New Breed. He had an album called New Season in 2001. And my favorite song was track 11, where it says, it's a new season, it's a new day. A fresh anointing is coming my way or flowing my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. So are you ready for a new season? We just entered a new physical season, the season of winter, which is on December 21st. And we get ready to go into a new season of winter as we go into January of 2022. So as you can see, seasons come and go. Are you ready for a new season? Notice I didn't say, are you ready for a new year or, or are you ready for a new week? I ask you, are you ready for a new season? The biblical book of Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one in the New Living Translation says, for everything, there is a season and a time for every activity under heaven. That is my core text today. For everything, there is a season and for every activity under heaven. We all know that there is a season, which is a period of time. You see, our calendars consist of four seasons. If you follow sports, you know that they deal in seasons, football season, basketball season. See, it's the same thing with our lives. We have different seasons. Some of us are coming out of a season. Some of us are just going into another season. And we understand that the season or for certain things in our lives have already passed. For example, there may be some things that you just can't do anymore. It's not that we don't want to do them. We physically cannot do them anymore. That season in our lives have passed. Ladies, gentlemen, when we look in our closets, I'm sure there's some clothes that were appropriate for a particular season in our life, but right now, we couldn't fit them if we tried. Why? Because that season in our life has already passed. Everything, there is a season. Are you ready for a new season? We also have spiritual seasons. If we're going to understand our spiritual lives, we must have an understanding of seasons. In the text, the word season means an appropriate period, a time around an appointed moment. So the text could possibly read like this. To everything, 
there is an appropriate period and an appropriate time to everything, every purpose under the sun. We have no problem believing whatever God has purposed in our lives. We believe that it is going to come to pass. Our problem is not if it's going to pass. Most of us have to deal with when is it coming to pass. So life consists of seasons, and season consists of particular moments in time. Because so many of us focus on the when it's going to happen rather than the if it's going to happen, it's important to be able to discern what season we are in our lives. It's important to be able to understand when God is ready to take you from season A to season B. You need to know when a shift is coming. You need to brace yourself and maybe get ready. You might need to pack your bags and get going. Sometimes when things happen and when things come to pass, we become our biggest hindrance. Sometimes, yeah, we try to blame the devil. It's, it's somebody else's fault. You see, the devil and other people are not our biggest hindrances because the Bible says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So no matter if it's going to be formed by the devil or by somebody else, it is not going to prosper. The Bible also says that great is he that is in us than he in us than he is in the world. Other folks and the devil are not our biggest problem because we've already got victory over all of that. Am I saying that during specific seasons we won't be attacked or, or feel like we're under attack? No, what I'm saying is that it's going to be difficult seasons, but they only last for a short period of time. And all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord. So yes, difficult seasons may come. But if you just stand on the word of God, if you stand on the promises of God, that particular season, no matter how difficult it is, will pass. That's why the psalmist could boldly declare that weeping may endure for a night. Because, yes, there is a season of weeping. But then he continues by saying joy comes in the morning because there is also a season for joy. Are you ready for a new season? It's imperative that we discern the seasons that we're in because we don't want to be weeping when it's time to rejoice. We don't want to be mourning when it's time to laugh. We don't want to be keeping stuff when it's time to throw it away. Amen. In other words, we want to be in tune with what the Lord is doing. We want to know when the seasons change, and we want to know when the appointed time, not our time, but God's appointed time, has come in our life. In the natural realm, we have a calendar which says that on the 21st day of the month, i.e. December 21st, the season changes. Yet we know the season doesn't always change on the 21st. In other words, the physical manifestation doesn't always appear on the 21st. The season doesn't change because the day has arrived. The season changes because the time has arrived. What I'm saying is it's a seasonal change without any rigid formula. We serve a God of seasons. We see it in creation. God created the four seasons based upon the rotation of the earth and its orbit around the sun. The seasons change as the earth moves, but the sun, S-U-N, in our planetary system remains constant, and everything revolves around it. Much like the earth, our lives should revolve around the sun, S-O-N. Not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N, which is Jesus the Christ. Our lives will change, and we will enter and exit many seasons, but the sun, the S-O-N, remains constant, yesterday, today, and forever. We're all being seasoned for a new season. I think somebody should say amen on that one. Just like I said earlier, we serve a God of seasons, but God doesn't measure seasons and clocks and calendars, but through divine truth and spiritual revelation. You see, Dr. Williams, members of St. Paul, and all who are listening, when we get a fresh word from the Lord, then we enter a new season. When the pastor comes up with a creative, innovative sermon series, our new way to teach and preach the biblical text, then he's just stepped into a new season. When the choir sings with an anointing like they've never sung before, then they've stepped into a new season. When leadership changes in various auxiliaries and ministries, it's because it's time for a new season. When souls are being saved, lives are being changed, and disciples are being developed, we are all going into a new season. Yes, if you get married, if you get divorced, if you have a child, if you bury a child, you have stepped into a new season of your life. Every aspect of our life 
is as unto a season. And there's a purpose for every season. See, God revealed truth about new seasons. Some of the things that were very necessary last season are not important to us in this season. Because there's no time for every, there is a time to every purpose under the heaven. Some things that we have done over the past 150 years here at St. Paul and other places, it was good for that season, but that season is over. We're moving now into a new season. God has fulfilled what God purposed in that particular season. God will move us into another season. God has taken us from faith to faith, from glory to glory, walking into a new season. And the walk with the Lord is designed to be a progressive walk, not a slow walk. Not a stagnant walk, but a progressive walk. We need to be moving somewhere. We need to be headed somewhere. We need to be going somewhere. And in order for that, we need to be ready. That's why we need to understand what season we're in. You see, we also see this numerous times in the scriptures. Jesus told his disciples that there's some things that I will reveal to you, but right now, oh, you can't handle it. Right now is not the time for that. When Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan, he could have set up church right then and there. It was already in the plan of God, but guess what? It just wasn't the right time. When Saul of Tarsus, later became Paul, had his conversion experience on the Damascus Road, the Lord could have appeared to him earlier, but it wasn't the right time. When King David was anointed to be the king of Israel, it would be years later before the king would be appointed king. Because the time of his anointing was not the time of his appointing. We need to be in our set place in the particular season of our life. We need to be where the Lord would have us to be right now. You see, God is a God of order. And we don't want to be out of order in any area of our life. Yes, when we're out of order, huh, that season may shift, but the time will be unfavorable. It may be a season of chastening. It may be a season of drought. It may even become a season of desert experiences. There are seasons that we don't want to go through, but it's through those seasons that we learn things. And you wouldn't want to learn them if you hadn't, you wouldn't have learned them if you had not gone through them. Am I preaching to anybody here other than myself? There are some seasons that you've gone through that you don't know why you had to go through them, but there was a reason. And just because you're going through some stuff, or you've gone through some rough stuff, doesn't mean that God is finished with you. Because God has become a good work in you and will perform until the day of Jesus Christ. St. Paul and all who are watching all over the world, you have done great in 2021. Right here, I do know that this edifice, this, this body of believers called St. Paul United Methodist Church at Oxford Hill, in this year alone has added eight new members to their membership role. And even greater than that, they have baptized 15 new converts. That is amazing. And yes, it was all done in the midst of a continued COVID-19 pandemic. So don't tell me God is still not working. And don't tell me that things cannot change because of the pandemic. God is not finished with you yet. Your work has spanned over many seasons, and that's why we will continue to do what God has called us to do. As I stated earlier, physical seasons are created when the earth revolves around the sun. The sun is constant, and it doesn't change. In our spiritual seasons, we have a constant sun, too, the S-O-N, the Son of God. I just kind of want to reiterate that again, that there are some constants in our life, even in the midst of change. Jesus changed the whole world <laughs> when he came. He changed it by challenging the people to follow him. Yes, following Jesus can be a challenge, and it could cause some various seasons in our lives. I'm convinced that the Lord will challenge us every single day of our life until our time on earth has ended. I welcome that challenge because I know it's for my personal and spiritual development, and the Lord is just preparing me for the next season. And I'm sure that St. Paul has had many seasons over the past 150 years, but they're only preparing you for the next season and the next season and the next season. I believe that the number one reason for every season in life is to bring us closer to the Lord. If we're not living for the Lord, then we're not really living in my book. We're merely existing. 
of all the things we accumulate in life. The only things that last are relationships that we establish. Our relationship with God and relationship with others is what it's all about. That's why we work together. That's why we develop relationships. We're all being seasoned for a specific season in our lives. As I close, I want to leave you with some great news. At the end of every season comes the harvest. At the end of every season comes the harvest. St. Paul, those who are worshiping on Facebook Live and YouTube and wherever you may be, please hear this. That at the end of every season, a good season or a bad season, a challenging season or a rewarding season, comes a harvest. So I want you, as we get ready to go into 2022 and beyond, get ready for the harvest. You've already seen some fruits of the labor here. You've already seen your harvest grow with your baptisms and your new members. Get ready for the harvest. The harvest starts today. It starts this week. It starts watch night. It starts on January 1st. The harvest continues to come every single day. This past year, in 2021, we were all perplexed by political polarity. We were challenged by church hurt. We were dismayed by denominational discord. And we still had to deal with COVID-19, with the various variances that they've had. Delta, not Omicron, and who knows what's coming next. Despite of all of this, I believe that God still had a purpose for everything that happened. I believe that it was preparing us for a new season. One season has ended and it's time for the harvest. The harvest is going to come at the end of the season. Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, aha, we shall reap if we faint not. So, we're moving into a season of faithfulness. We're moving into a season of spiritual formation, reading our Bibles more, challenging, asking questions, getting to know more about the text. We're moving to a season of tithing, amen, giving God's tithes and giving a little bit more, going above and beyond and giving offerings because God has blessed us just that much. We're moving into a season of new leadership, amen, yes, new leadership. Why? Because God is raising up new leaders and those who have Tall the vineyards for all these years can now sit and watch how their work has been uh, deposited into those who come into new leadership. It's a season of rest and renewal. So whenever our body says you need to sit down and take a nap, sit down and take a nap. Because if not, it will sit you down. We're coming to a new season of self-care because we have to take care of self first so that we can take care of others. We're moving into a season of healthier eating. Amen. We're going to be like Daniel. We're going to eat some more vegetables instead of eating a whole bunch of fried chicken. Although I do love my fried chicken and it went really good with that sweet potato pie. But anyway, as I was saying, we want to move into a season of healthier eating and exercising. That doesn't mean you have to go join a gym. Although if you want to, by all means, please do. But what it says is you can just go outside. In the middle of winter, spring, summer, or fall, and take a walk. And when you take that walk, not only are you exercising your body, but you can see God's masterpiece. You can look at the trees, you can look at the clouds, and you can just have a wonderful time while exercising your body. We're going into a season of increasing our prayer life. As I told my clergy the other day, I am just that crazy to believe that prayer works. So I would implore you to have an increase in your prayer life. We will also move into a season of more communication with family and friends. If this COVID hasn't done anything else, it has caused us to one who have to remain inside and then use the telephone, use Zoom, use Google Meets, have other ways to communicate with people other than just texting. And that is a great way because I do that quite often as well and emails. But it has caused families to come together because now they can't go anywhere. So now moms and dads and sisters and brothers are now having more communication and we're making sure that our loved ones in another state are doing well. So this is a season of increasing our time with our family. And finally, it is a season of unconditional love. Unconditional love. What does that mean? That means loving without limits. That means loving no matter what. As a parent, and I'm quite sure we have several parents that may be watching here now, there may be times in our lives that our children don't do exactly what we want them to do, 
And there may be times in our lives we may look at our spouse and say, whose child is that? That's your side of the family. You know how we do. But then no matter what they do, no matter how they act, we love them unconditionally. We would never leave them or forsake them. We would never uh, not be by their side. We will always do whatever's best. And that's what God does for us. And that's what we're supposed to do for God, in the name of God, and for our brothers and sisters. Have unconditional love. You know why? God had it for us. I'm not perfect. I don't know about you. I tell people I did not come in the world saved. Amen. I'm still a sinner saved by God's grace. And every single day, I'm thankful for the grace that I have. Because I'm human, and sometimes I still mess up. But God still loves me, and God still loves you. God loved us so much that God sent God's Son in the world just for us, Jesus the Christ. Jesus came on the scene just for that season because God was shifting God's season, and now God had to deal with humankind. And yes, we were kind of a mess then, and we're kind of a mess now. But God doesn't change. God still loves us. God doesn't change. God still loves us. And one for the Holy Ghost. God doesn't change. God still loves us so much that he gave Jesus the Christ, who was falsely accused, who was unjustly tried and convicted, who was unmercifully crucified on that regular cross, died on that cross so that we may be saved and have a home in heaven. But the harvest came at the end of that season because God raised him on the third day. And we're told that he sits at the right hand of the Father and is watching over us. We've had plenty of joys and sorrows. We've had plenty seasons of want and plenty seasons of plenty. And all of that, as it says in Ecclesiastes, it still is a time under the sun. I congratulate everyone for surviving your current season, and I celebrate the new season, not only here at St. Paul in Oxon Hill, but every single place. I'm quite sure that if Dr. Darrell Williams was here, he would do what we would call an invitation. So I invite you now to talk about your season, pray about your season, and understand that you're in a season, and that you may be moving from one season to another. And we invite you to a seasonal relationship with Jesus the Christ. Well, what do you mean a seasonal? I thought we should have a permanent relationship. Yes, our seasons do change as we come to know Jesus the Christ. There will come a time when we want to be friends with Jesus. Then there will come a time when we are just totally in love with ourselves because of what Jesus has done. And we're in love with our neighbors because of what Jesus has done. So I invite you into that relationship with Jesus the Christ. I also invite you into a relationship with a local community church, a local church here at St. Paul or any other church that may be in your neighborhood because seasons change, people change, and it's time for us to have some community with each other. I'm going to close by saying, of course, Israel was one of my favorite artists. He had a song on his album called The Power of One that says, moving forward, I'm not going back, I'm moving ahead. Here to declare to you my past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrendered my life to Christ because I am moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. So God bless you. Please understand that you're moving forward from one season to another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I hope that message was a blessing to you. Maybe that message was such a blessing that it stirred something in you and you want to get a little bit closer to God. Listen, we want you to be in fellowship and relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. If you want to do that, all you got to do is let us know. Go to our website, www.stpauloxithill.org and press the contact us button. Once you press it, just say, I want to be saved or I want prayer. And we will reach right back out to you to pray the prayer of salvation or to pray over your personal needs. We want you to be engaged. We want you to be involved. But most importantly, we want you to have a connection with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Listen, if you enjoyed this, we want to make sure you're a part of the St. Paul family. Like and subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We want you to know everything that's going on. We want you to know every time we put out content, and we want to continue to be a blessing to your life. If you want to support our ministry, 
All you've got to do is go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org, and press the Give tab. You can give your tithe there, you can give your regular offering, or you can make a special gift unto the church. Every dollar counts. Every dollar helps us spread the gospel all around the world, and we'd appreciate your support. It helps more than you know. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And now it's time for the Williams Weekly Challenge. The Word of God tells us to not only be hearers of the Word, but also doers of the Word. We've made it through the entire year. 2021 has been awesome in a lot of ways. That's why this week, my challenge to you is a little bit different. This week, my challenge to you is to reflect. I want you to reflect on three things. I want you to reflect on the high points of 2021. There were some wonderful and awesome things that happened. There were some times of celebration, some times of great joy. But I also want you to reflect, secondly, on some of the low points. There were some times of tragedy this year. There were some times of loss this year. There were some real times of confusion this year. But thirdly, I want you to reflect on the fact that no matter what you've been through, in the high times and in the low times, God has been with you at all times through this year. This week, my challenge to you, Reflect on 2021, the year that was, so you can be ready for 2022, the year that will be. God bless you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.